I'm Chicano, and this is Paradise. Once you accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Paradise, Heaven, pretty much awaits, is guaranteed. All you got to do is walk down the right path. So today, I'm going to tell you guys another story, another Pico Union story from my past, which includes mobbing, shootings, and getting shot. So if that type of stuff doesn't appeal to you, you might as well tune out now. So this is uh, something that was going on in the 90s, which was mobbing. I mean, we were wall killers. All my mobbers out there will surely know what I'm talking about. And um, I was addicted. What can I say? I, that was the one thing that I did. But mobbing, I got three cases one time in one year. Um, but that's neither here nor there. This story is about when we we're battling BS, which is a, a crew back in the 90s in L.A. that really got up. They were like us. They were wall killers. They were more <clears throat> they were into it just for tearing walls up. You know, it wasn't really about the the art. So it was mo mostly about putting in work. You know, it was that um, West Coast uh, tagger mentality, that West Coast graffiti mentality. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And um you hear the roosters basically because I had um, a dream. It was actually a nightmare that woke me up and I haven't even exercised, didn't have breakfast or, or anything. I literally got up to make this video. Um, I don't know why, but it was a, a wicked dream and that's part of my PTSD. That's something that I have to deal with, but that's neither here nor there. Just letting you guys know why the setting's a little different than what you guys are used to. Um, but yeah, so we set up a battle in uh, downtown LA. For those of you guys that don't know what it is, is you basically is a graffiti battle. You go out and hit the streets, and um, you see who gets up the most. If someone tags in one place, usually tag above it, you know, or next to it, or whatever. If you want to be respectful, and so we're battling BS, and um, we pretty much had like downtown on lock. Um, and then they had um, the west side of L.A. They would really get up over there. And that's where we would want to go put in work. And then we also had um, the east side of L.A. Uh, they pretty much didn't go over that area. They, they did go into a downtown. And like I said, they had the west side on lock. And so um, we um, the way we would do it is we'd set up a meeting usually at 10th Street. Um, those of you guys that are from Pico Union know exactly where that's at, 10th Street Elementary School. And we'd all just uh, sit down and we strategize. You know, we'd uh, set up a plan of attack. Um, military minded, you know, that's how it was. And so we would set, we had homies with different set of skills. You know, uh, we had homies that specialized in different things. You know what I mean? So uh, Quick was down to go mobbing whenever. Cell was down to go mobbing whenever. I was always down to go mobbing. So it was about 20 of us, you know, and um, the way I had it done is I had um, a groups of threes, you know, and some groups of threes will go hit up all of Olympic. Um, they go bomb it up. And then another group will hit up South Central. And then I usually would take the East side. And so um, that's how I went down. And then uh, this day, uh, I'll tell you my story first. Something else happened to that day, um, but I'll tell you my story first. It was me and my brother. They call him Devo and some other fools too that were from the clique. We we're in the east side and we're hitting up everywhere, catching spots. And so we got hungry and we were in the Indiana Dukes neighborhood. Those of you guys that are from the east side, you guys know exactly where that's at. They had two taco trucks right there. And so we stopped by the taco truck and... Um, like I said, I was addicted to mobbing. So the homies were right there, they were ordering food, had the spray can with me. And I told the homie, hey, I'll be back, you know? And then I told um, the homie quick, if you wanted to come with us, come, uh, if you wanted to come with me. And so um, I rolled up to a wall and then um, I just started bombing it. I started hitting it up, you know, started riding. And then all of a sudden you just hear, pow, pow. And I was like, holy shit, they're shooting. And I kept tagging. And so then it went, It, went, it was crazy, man. And so, if you guys ever been shot at, uh, you know, if you start hearing them, the bullets, you just dodged a bullet. 
and I was hearing multiple ones, more than five. It went, pew. have you ever heard of, um, a bullet go by your ear? It sounds like this, pew, 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 just flying by your head. And um, I'm trying to be quiet because my wife's still asleep, but um, going by my head, going, boom, boom, and I'm like, holy shit. So then I just um, duck and I start booking it. And then the homies were over there, my brother too, like they heard. And I just started running. I went the opposite side of where the homies were because the homies were deep in their neighborhood, in the Duke's neighborhood, um, which is where the taco truck was. So I'm like, I got to go the other way, get lost the other way. And as I was going, I was praying, man, I hope my brother comes get me. I hope my brother comes get me. Because my fear was that they were going to get in a car and they were going to, uh, come look for me, you know, and start, and start, uh, you know, blasting me, dude. This is LA, man. This is where people die for nothing, you know, uh, for stupidity. And this is a risk that you take. This is a gamble that you take when you're out there on the streets doing stupid shit. And so let me get a little drink of my monster. And so I start running. My heart is pounding, man. Hard as pine. This is the first time that I had ever been shot at. <clears throat> I was like 17 and whew, heart pounding. I, I was thinking to myself, damn, I almost got killed. And then the thought of, I'm gonna get killed. These fools are gonna roll up on me. Um, because the, the Dukes they were known for taking care of their barrio just like that, like you saw right there. People didn't go into that barrio, but there was food there, there was a taco truck, and we were hungry. So, and sure enough, my brother came. I was like, thank God. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like you could have fucking gotten killed. And sorry for the cussing, you know, but this is how it went down. And I was like, let's just go, let's just go. You know, and all the homies were already in the cars and we took off. And so that's the story of where I almost got killed or where, not almost, well, where I got shot at. Um, and that was when we were battling BS. So it was all for the fame, man. All for the fame, the street fame. And by the little did I know that the homie Happy, they, they're the ones that had um, Olympic Boulevard, the homie Happy and a couple of the homies, um, they were out there. And so they were catching spots and some fools rolled up on them and they got blasted. And my homeboy Happy actually got hit. He got hit in the stomach, um, I think multiple times. And so he was on his way out. He was going to die. Um took him to the hospital and all that. They uh, opened him up, uh, stitched him back up, and he recovered. Slowly but surely, he recovered. And um, before that, the homeboy Happy was like, he was into mobbing big time. He was one of the homies, he had styles too, so he was one of the homies that um, would really put in work. He was always down to go mobbing. But after that, understandably so, you know, he slowed down because um, he almost got killed. And so, yeah, he knows who, who shot at him. You know, they told me back in the day who it was, but this was years ago, guys, 20 years ago or so. So um, I don't even want to put out false information out there about who shot him. Um, so, but if you're watching the video, haps, go ahead and let us know. Um, yeah, because one of the main things that I worry about when telling this story is number one, glorifying it. I do not want to glorify that life. Cause it's a BS life, you know, it's, it's not, it's no good. It leads you to nowhere, but you're young, you're addicted to the thrills. I know, trust me, I know. Um, I got other stories that I could tell you about when we're mobbing, I was looking at the time, see how much I have left. Um, you know, um, and then number two, I, I'll, I don't want to mislead you guys. So, and during this time too, I'm going to have some time. So I'm going to tell you some more, um, the homeboy rack. He was he had a badass caprice old school which was known around town because we that we used to put in work with that car um and so um on the enemies and so this time I wanted to go mobbing and so it was me and the homie stern and they dropped us off in echo park right in right in the baseball field you know like right there by the lake right in front dropped us off right there and um we each had a spray can and what we were going to do, what we did do, is we got onto the freeway the opposite way. And we just started bombing the whole freeway. Started mobbing it up, man. Cars honking. In the middle of it, just like nothing. And both of us were athletic, you know. So, like, we're like, hey, let's do this. 
So we just kept going on the freeway, running, catching spots, wherever, you know, wherever we saw fit, kept going. Um, and then we turned going into downtown on the freeway still. So we're still on the freeway. And this is by the time we're on the uh, Harbor Freeway. So we're going back towards downtown, which is where we were from, and still catching spots. And it was like, I would say that was one of the biggest throws of my life because this is, it was like around 10 p.m. Um, still a lot of traffic, LA traffic. You're doing something illegal in front of everyone. You know, cars honking, you know, people yelling shit out of the, uh, out of their windows. And we didn't care. And think about it, like we could have been caught by the cops. And at this time, uh, they were locking up graffiti artists and they were giving them some prison time if you had multiple cases. And I believe I already had three. So there's that thrill, you know, about being caught. And so, um, but we kept going, we kept going. And then we got off once we arrived into a Pico Union area, we got off the ramp, just like, you know, cars get off. We kicked it for a little bit, caught our breath, went into the um, liquor and into the Arco, the gas station, came up on some 40 ounces, kicked it, drank some 40 ounces, and then just walked home. After that, mission accomplished. So these are the type of stories. These are the type of things that I did growing up and that, you know, the homies did growing up. Like you saw, I mean, I almost got shot. And then uh, the homie did get shot. And God was protecting me, guys. He was protecting me right there. You know, my mom's prayers were protecting me. And so, uh, you guys don't know it, but my mom is with me now. I brought her over here from the United States. So that's another blessing. That's another thing that God is doing for me. Because I really missed her. And so, you know, I wanted her next to me. And God brought her to me. We're reunited, and so get a little bit more of my monster. Got that cotton mouth. Um, hopefully, you guys like that story because I got more like that, and I would usually tell it with more energy. But like I said, it's early morning here. You guys could hear the Brewsters, people are asleep, and um, yeah. Let me know about a couple stories, what, what you and your crew did back in the 90s, you know, in the comments section. Um, who did you used to roll with? What type of activities you did you do? I'm sure you have something similar to this. One of the things that I'm afraid of heights. It's crazy, you know, but I'm the type of person that I like to do things that get, make me uncomfortable. Because that's, you know, I pu purposely put myself in awkward situations because that's how I grow. You know, I learn and I grow. And um, there's another story about mobbing. Um, I actually, and, and we were in Echo Park, and there was this huge billboard right on Sunset Boulevard, right on Sunset Boulevard. Um, and I'm afraid of heights. And I went up there, and it was a, it was you know no advertisement on it yet. And I hit it up, <laughs> bombed it all up. Anybody that's ever hit up a billboard, oh my god, the thrill. You guys know. You guys know, on Sunset Boulevard, think about that. I was on Sunset Boulevard catching a spot. Cars honking. Again, people yelling shit out. But I had all the homies. That day we were deep. It was probably, I mean, we're like, I don't know, three cars deep. And they were all down right there by where the billboard was just kicking and smoking, drinking while I was catching a spot. So I didn't feel threatened one bit. Um, and at the time, I don't think I felt fear either. Or the cops i feel fear from falling so i wasn't even thinking about the cops and it was windy so the thing was shaking but i still caught the spot you know things that knuckleheads do um back in the day i'm sure there's some you youngsters right now that are doing it too i'm gonna tell you to not do it because only god can tell you what to do but i'm just telling you the only thing that gives me peace is god everything else makes me nervous everything else makes me like doubt is everything else makes me unsure um but when i center myself through christ by meditating by calling on the holy spirit then i feel like i'm right at home you know and everything makes sense all the madness makes sense you know when you have christ as um your foundation when you're rooted in christ 
even the bad things that happen, you are thankful for. Because you're like, Jesus, you know, I know that this bad thing happened, but I know that you have a plan. I know that it happened for a reason. And I will see that reason if I just continue on remaining true to you and remaining true to the word. So living life through scripture, when you could, you know, think about Bible, Bible verses as you're living your life. You know you're on the right path guys so like always man i gotta talk about god because he's the reason i'm here you know he's the reason i'm here he's the reason that i'm gonna keep growing he's the reason that i'm alive you know and change is ine inevitable guys you either change for the worse or you change for the best so it's up to you but you will have to change yet sometimes you have to change forcefully because people will change you, situations will change you. So why not you take charge and change for yourself? That way you're in control through Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because when you give everything to Christ, when you give everything to our Lord and Savior, life becomes so much easier, guys. Because that is your base, your foundation. So hopefully you guys can see. I doubt you guys can see it. It's still too, too early, but... Here's the view. And um, I'm getting more equipment to keep this vlogging thing going. Um, got a new microphone. About to share it in a short. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. I'm out.